Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, The Real Super Sam, and today is another comic review and I hope you enjoy. Many, many people know that there is a Marvel Comics character named Spider-Woman. There have actually been at least three main ones. The first one I'll be looking at the first issue in her original solo series that lasted 50 issues. This is Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman 1. She used to be a brainwashed Hydra soldier sent to assassinate Nick Fury before she discovered the truth. She then teamed up with The Thing, and now she's still in London and has been reduced to stealing food. She decides not to stoop so low and leaves without get taking anything, but a guy, a policeman named Jerry Hunt, spots her and tries, fails, to arrest her. The next day, we see Jessica Drew. Right now, she's looking for a job and can't get one. One reason is because of her power, she just naturally freaks everyone out around her. She's part spider, part woman, and she lives in a small loft, rented out to her only because the landlord is so chill. That night, when she dreams about her full origin, she was young and she got radiation poisoning. Her father treated her by putting her in a stasis chamber. Eventually, her mother died and father disappeared, leading to her father's lab partner, Herbert Windham, who became the high evolutionary, finally curing her after years of work. She was cured and had powers. The next day, Jerry Hunt spots her as a civilian and she runs into an alley, changes into Spider-Woman and attacks him, but then realizes that she could have killed him and she leaps in the way, moving faster than the speed of the lamppost she threw and saves him. I've never read the original Spider-Woman before, and this was a really unique, probably one of the most realistic depictions of someone if they had powers, more like a curse than a gift just existing with them. This is my favorite panel where Spider-Woman is wallowing in self-pity, deservedly so, but it snaps out of it saying nothing is holding her back, not really, and she's responsible for her actions. She's free. So why do things go wrong? Well, she still is, has powers though. I don't know where it is, but I like that part the most. It is cliche, inspirational, but yeah, the impossible can happen. You should just keep going. I think it's stuff like this. Uh, I think it just came out a good time for me to read. It's like a quote-unquote heroic things that are the best parts of why media like this exists. Moving on, she does change her hair from blonde to black in the issue, and she has her venom blast she can fight out of her hands. There's no supervillain here, just some thugs that were in her last story during the Marvel 2-in-1 team-up. Deanne has Jerry in the hospital, and he works for S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury, but he's not after her for S.H.I.E.L.D. In fact, at the end, he develops a weird crush on her, wanting to just meet her once again, especially since she saved his life after he got grazed by a bullet, and she quickly delivered him to the hospital. Spider-Man doesn't get mentioned at all in this issue, and I think it's in the series he only physically appears once. I just had to say that, because I know so many people were wondering about that. And with that said, I'd say right now, it's a great story, maybe even underappreciated. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.